Hello, this is saxophonist Greg Fishman. Today I'd like to talk to you about my latest book, which is called The Lobster Theory. The Lobster Theory? What's that? The Lobster Theory is one of 18 analogies that are included in this new book, and these are analogies I've developed over the past 25 to 30 years of teaching jazz improvisation. I found that if I explained a musical concept through an analogy, through something that was relatable to the person, they could immediately get the concept understand it on a deep level, and start to use it in their playing immediately. Okay, so these are very conceptual things, and they really change the way you approach the music, and also they're just a lot of fun, so they're easy to remember. And uh, this book is illustrated by a great artist named Mick Stevens. Mick Stevens is a cartoonist for the New Yorker magazine. I'm sure you'll recognize his style when you see the pictures in the book. He also happens to be a Skype student of mine. And so that's how we met. And I'm going to show you uh, the lobster theory, the drawing, and I'm going to explain the basic concept behind that one chapter so you get kind of where I'm going with this. All right, here is Mick's hilarious depiction of the lobster theory. We have these ideas here, and the lobsters are the musical ideas. Those are fresh ideas. And then on the other side, we have the pot of boiling water with a C7 cord on it, and then the chef, that would be like the player using the idea. Okay? So... Here's how it works. Let's talk about lobsters. You're going to go to a restaurant, you want to eat lobsters. They're alive in a tank. Do you know why they don't have a bunch of dead lobsters in the refrigerator from like five days ago, like next to the burgers and the chicken and all that stuff? Well, it's because lobster spoils immediately. In order for the lobster to be fresh and to taste good, you have to have the live lobster going in the boiling pot of water. And so it has a very short shelf life. It's the same thing with jazz improvisation when you're making up a solo. You know, the ideas, they have a short shelf life when you're coming up with them. Okay, so say right over here is a new chord change. That's like the boiling pot of water. Say right here, we've got the idea. You have to come up with the idea in very close proximity to that new chord change in order for the idea to sound fresh and in the moment. So they're counting off Cherokee, and you're already starting to think about, oh, I'm going to play this lick on the bridge of my solo you have dead lobsters. It's, it's, it's not going to work. The notes will fit the chords, but it's not going to sound fresh. It's not going to sound of the moment. It's going to sound kind of worked out or contrived a little bit, you know. And so the key to the lobster theory is to understand that any idea could be alive or dead. It could be a live lobster or a dead lobster. What makes it alive or dead is not the idea itself as much as when you think of the idea. So with that being said, that means you have to have such command over your vocabulary that it's ready to go in a moment's notice. As soon as you hear the idea, you can execute it on your instrument. Okay, there's more to it than that. That's the basic concept, but let's, let's dive a little bit further in, okay? So now, say you're listening to a recording and you hear a soloist end and you hear a new soloist begin, but the, the new soloist takes the last few notes of the previous soloist, and that's how he starts his solo. Well, that is the lobster theory in action, and it's a real part of the tradition of the music, okay? Because there's no way this guy could have known how this solo was going to end. So that ensures that the ideas are fresh, that he wasn't just sitting there pre-planning what he was going to play, but he acted on the spur of the moment, so it's got this live energy to it, okay? Now, you don't have to just take it from a previous soloist. You can take live lobster ideas from the pianist, from the drummer, from the bass player, from anyone in the group. The idea is that it's happening in the moment. You're hearing it, you're reacting to it, and so that keeps things fresh. Okay. Now, then when you have that, when they do that process, they take this idea. You'll love the name for this. This is called imported lobster. So you're working with imported lobster, which is always fresh. When you're playing just your own ideas, that's called domestic lobster. Okay, now we're going to get into the origin of the lobster. Where do these ideas come from in the first place? Well, with jazz, it's really an oral tradition and it's got a great history. All those wonderful masters of the past who have played Coleman Hawkins and Lester Young and Louis Armstrong and Charlie Parker and Sonny Stitt and Coltrane and on and on, you know. So that's the source, you know. So imagine this you're listening, your ears are like nets, your mind is like a tank on this lobster boat, okay? As you listen, so let's say you're listening to, uh, okay, you're listening to Stan Getz. You hear ideas that look, they look, they sound like Stan Getz. They go in your imaginary tank in your mind, okay? And they're living there for a while. Then you go over to the uh, 
Dexter Gordon uh, C. And you're listening to Dexter. Well, those ideas go in there too. You know, and then, you know, you like to travel. So now you go to the Coltrane Ocean. You're listening to Coltrane. You got ideas that look and sound like Coltrane in your head. Over the years, these will crossbreed, these lobsters in your imaginary tank. They crossbreed. You get a new species of lobster bearing your name, which has your favorite traits of each of the people you've listened to. So it works great because it's a tie-in to the history of the music, but also it's not exactly like any one of them. It's, it's a hybrid. It's a combination. So through that, that's the lobster bearing your own name. Okay, And I call that your inner lobster. While you're playing, they're domestic lobsters, but your inner lobster is basically you, your identity, that comes out in your compositions and in your solos. Okay, So that's where they come from. And in the beginning, you're using OPLs, which are other players' lobsters. So you're using these guys mostly in the beginning, a lot of theirs. As you get more mature as a player, you start to get further away from that and you develop your own lobsters and you, you, you let your own style evolve. That's the idea. So that's basically how it works. So that is one of 18 chapters in this new book, and I'm really uh, pleased with the way it turned out. I wasn't going to put it out till I felt that it was just, just right, just the way I wanted to present the material, and it took over two years to put this little book together, about 100 pages, 18 chapters, and there are musical examples to play through in here. There are a lot of big concepts that are going to totally transform your playing. I have a system in here for memorizing scales and key signatures that is completely unique and very user-friendly. I also have the 60 most common chords and a new way for you to think about the chords in terms of flavor and the taste of the chord instead of just thinking intellectually about the spelling. So the book is just out. This is September 2014 and it is just coming out now this month and it's available on my website. That's gregfishmanjsstudios.com. I hope you check out the book. Stay in touch with me. Let me know how you like it. I think whether you're a teacher, a student, young, old, there are concepts in this book that will transform your playing. And once you read through it once, they will stay with you, okay? And it will really make a difference in just the way you think of things, okay? So I hope you enjoy the new book. It's been my pleasure writing it for you. Have fun with it. I'll talk to you later. Take care.